It's Friday, Feedback Friday, the feedback day of the week. Ha! It's Feedback Friday. I almost didn't sing that because sad day yesterday um, with Lagarto's passing. Um, but it's a Feedback Friday song. I have to do it. Um, and uh, I shouldn't be doing videos if I'm not capable of fully doing videos. So, you know, th uh, and and on on the first point, I have to thank everybody for being understanding yesterday that I didn't do the, the Twitch stream. It was very, very... Um, kind of you guys to say no just take the day um i ended up starting up a gofundme instead because i was itching going oh, i'm gonna lose that revenue um which tells you something about twitch's revenue model that even though i haven't been doing it very long it's still something i can't afford to miss um but uh so i started a gofundme and people were really generous it was up to like 60 percent of goal um about 10 hours after I started, I'm recording that now. Um, uh, so thank you for that. Um, yeah, I, I added a little update, but if there is some overage, I don't know how GoFundMe works. I've never used it before, but if there is overage, um, Loki, my dog, needs to have a benign growth removed in the spring. Um, we're trying to wait until then because healing in a little dog in the winter is tough. So we're trying to get as close to the spring as we possibly can because you have to, you know, it's it's right under his arm and you have to keep wounds dry. And that's really difficult with a dog that goes outside and likes to pee in snowbanks and sometimes falls in snowbanks. So we're, we're trying to, um, we've had it tested. That's why we know it's benign. Um, but if there is any overage, it'll go towards that. And Momo's ongoing nose problems. Oh my god, the Patreons are going to get a video and a half when his new regimen starts up. He's getting a little mask for like puffers and um, and nasal sprays and all that stuff. It's, yes, I'm going to have to give a cat nasal sprays. Go me. Good things Momo's super chill. Except when it comes to cat carriers. And then he turns into a 22-pound ball of rage. Yes, Momo is 22 pounds. So the GoFundMe link is um, is on the link to this video. I'm not, I'm not going to push it too much. Um, just because that seems tacky. Um, but it is, you know, the time of year is really crappy um, for $1,000 in un unexpected expenses. Um because for people who don't know, traffic dips during the holidays. Um, people have to drop their Patreon support because they're overextended. They eventually come back, but January, February tends to be kind of leaner months, especially January. So I'll do this really quick. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Um, on to your comments. Um, interesting mix. Uh, potentially dodgy stuff and I think people handled it pretty well some of the commenters were like whoa this got heated and I I, I read and it's like oh that wasn't so bad uh, which uh, makes me happy because that means the quality of comments that people expect like the fact that people actually read the comment section on my videos is good uh because they're not a garbage fire um and um you know, so that's really good. But um, the Lara Croft video, I, I'm going to do a bit of an update mostly on that because most people just kind of agreed with me. Um, but it it looks like the guy, uh, and some people gave me shit for not um, saying what he said. And I thought I made it pretty clear that I couldn't call up what he'd said because he protected his tweets. I eventually got screen grabs of what he said. But, um, you know, at, at the time I made the video, I didn't have those. Um, I'm pulling them up now. because Oh, yeah, somebody, some, somebody who didn't know anything about the video, just somebody I know sent me screen grabs basically going, what an asshole, um, which I thought was interesting. Um, but um, moving forward, um, it, it was sort of the typical cycle 
of the first thing a bad actor does is threaten to sick the police on people. And then when that didn't work, he either suspended or deleted his Twitter account. Um, and this is one of those things where... You notice I'm hesitating because we all know what the reaction would be to that if he'd been female. Um, and yet, in this case, it seems deserving, though it would never be considered deserving if he were female. And this is the challenge I have. Um and and why I'm um, I, I'm being hesitant here. OK, here I finally found what he actually said. Um, so uh, in response to the original Lara Croft post, dude said, because my industry is trying to move beyond the sexist mentality of its former mindset, I for one love that women are not objectified as sex object as much as I am more than happy with the new character model. Okay, what's what's wrong with that? Um, how do I put this? If he's truly a feminist ally, or as I prefer to say, a feminist, um, if you if you if you acknowledge that there are still strides regarding women around the world, emphasis on around the world, um, and you support equality of the sexes you can call yourself a feminist even if you're male it's a belief system not just women are entitled to call themselves feminists but the problem with this from a feminist perspective is no one gives a shit buddy if you're more than happy with the new character model you know the problem with things like that we're trying to get away from the objectified depictions of women and all that stuff but i'm happy with the new character model you're still trying to gatekeep. You're still trying to control as a dude who worked on EverQuest as a customer support agent. Um, you're still trying to gatekeep what is acceptable and not acceptable forms of femininity. That bad. You you have to either like, it's one thing to say, I like it. But in this particular context of old Lara Croft, bad, new Lara Croft, good, that is dreaded word problematic. I did a whole Lady Bits episode about that. And so my girl Melanie got in and said, if you consider that picture to be sexually objectifying, then it sounds like a personal problem you might want to check yourself on. And this, this was the, the thing that got him in trouble. A host for GameStop, cute title. Condescension. Instead of trolling, maybe you can reread the statement and point I was making. Condescension. The industry has tried to mature instead of playing we knew better and didn't care card. What? And so she responds, nice patronizing, my dude. Don't even talk to me about sexism until you learn how to respect women yourself. I rest my case. And he responds, hey, GameStop, do you really want people like this representing your company? And that was the point where the internet pounced for trying to get her fired. And um, in that case, you know what? I don't think it would have mattered whether he was male or female. The internet generally frowns upon trying to get people fired. However, I have known cases where people got away with that. So it's dicey. It's dicey. On the one hand, I think that he deserved to take shit. I think that if he'd learned from his mistake and just apologized, people probably would have backed off after a while. Um, and, and that's the thing that surviving an internet dog pile is all about how you handled it, handle it. The original offense sometimes is justified, sometimes is not justified. And let's face it, whether something's justified is a, is, is a relatively subjective thing. But, I mean, that was open sexism. It was. And personally, I don't think it's right if anybody engages in um, condescension 
and you know there there are exceptions if somebody's condescending to you it's fine to respond in kind that's a coping mechanism but you shouldn't start it um but again i am doing it with the caveat of if he was a if he was a woman it would be he was harassed off the internet but i think we can all agree that melody mac is a fucking badass good for her good to see more women standing up for themselves and not being afraid to say i like the original lara croft I like the original Lara Croft because of her personality. I mean, uh, you can't really judge her body type because graphics weren't weren't where they are now, right? Like, it would be really different if they created a Toon-like character today. Um, and this is what's interesting. One person... Um, called me he called me out on not having the comments I didn't have the comments at the time that's fair to want to know but um he said um into the general body issue body representation female limitation area and you say some things that are problematic when talking about body types um it, okay when you're talking about body types, you talk about the MCU and the male representation in the movies. You say there is diversity because there are buff guys, less buff guys, serious guys, funny guys. Stop. Now you're talking about personality rather than body type. But that's the point. That's the point. Diversity in characterization is not just skin deep. It is. And it, he goes on and I don't quite... And basically, he has issues with the fact that most of the guys in the Marvel Universe are buff dudes. See, I'm not going to have an issue with that because um, it's a superhero movie. Of course, 90% of the people are going to be buff. But I also pointed out that in Spider-Man Homecoming and, and other uh, extended casts, there are non-buff dudes. Not so much with women. We're almost here. Um, but the personality is really important too. Like up until very recently, there was a real lack of, um, lack of, um, diversity in terms of female characters. They're all that sort of tough, scowly faced, you know, like, um, the, the one exception to that was when they wrote Black Widow in Captain America Winter Soldier. I think it was Winter Soldier. Yeah. I really thought Black Widow finally came alive in that movie. Um, now that's when I sort of criticize Marvel because they finally get a female led movie in Captain Marvel and they deliberately make her a cipher with a flattened personality. And I thought that was a huge mistake that I hope they will correct in the sequel. I just noticed there's costume stuff in the background. I apologize for that. Um, so that's just a bit of a follow-up. Diversity of personality is incredibly important because what is the big thing? We've loosened the restrictions on women in the media, how women can depict in the media. I mean, Lizzo is a is a big deal right now. And yes, yeah, she's been body shamed by some people, but you can, as a woman, uh, be an entertainer right now and be plus size. I mean, it's not just Lizzo. You know, Adele and Jennifer Lawrence, though she went on Nutrisystem or whatever, but y you know what I mean? Like, it has loosened. There are women on TV who are not sticks anymore. That used to be a problem. It is not so much anymore. I mean, look at This Is Us. Um... But characterization, the types of female characterizations that are allowed in media are still so stifled because people get so freaked out over, uh, over stereotypes and combating stereotypes. I mean, I call it Game of Thrones syndrome because people were really like pro Sansa and oh my god how could you how could you do that to Sansa and all that stuff because Sandra Sa Sandra Sansa is Sansa Stark is so traditionally feminine and everybody's like yeah Arya because Arya's straight up tomboy but Daenerys Targaryen who is very complicated and may have actually been bloodthirsty and um not so nice from the beginning 
like the rest of her family, people freaked out. And to me, that's a sign. One, the heel turn wasn't explained, but that that happens with a lot of characters and people don't freak out to that extent. It was that people are still not as accepting of complicated, challenging depictions of female heroes, for lack of a better term, heroines. That matters. The characterizations matter. And the thing about Lara Croft is not only did they nerf her boobs, they nerfed her personality. And I really think that a lot of people would be like, okay, fine, you're going to use motion capture. You use a real person's body. I don't have a problem with that. I do think her body is still idealized in the new games. That's a completely different complaint. The big complaint I hear from a lot of old-time fans like me is not that they nerfed her boobs. It's that they nerfed her personality. Okay, moving on. Um, the uh, men's issues in gaming, uh, the comments were, again... I'm always so grateful when people share on these topics. Sorry, I've got it on my my 4K screen, so I'm looking this way. Um, a lot, uh, once again, a lot of really raw comments, which is all the more reason I think I got to talk about this stuff. Um, and you know, one of the things that came up was my my offhanded comment about Joel being a poster boy for toxic masculinity, and some people didn't get what I was saying there. Like, this is this is why my point was this is why these depictions have to um, have to be okay to be included in games. You know, like that's why we we can't get too hung up on woke. Right. Uh, One person pointed out to me, black guy pointed out to me, and I totally agree. And I'm going to say for the record, again, woke is a really ironic term when white people use it because it is an appropriation of the term, a term that came from the black consciousness movement. It's actually directly associated with black awareness. So all these like white liberals who are using it are actually appropriating the term. Really ironic. But um, I uh, um, there's a lot of discussion about emotions. Oh, getting back to Joel. um, I did toxic masculinity in air quotes because this is precisely why I think the whole debate around it has become so toxic and I'm torn I'm torn right because again I don't think we should be afraid of words on the other it's not a word that affects me and so I feel less comfortable hand waving on that particular issue because it doesn't affect me I don't know how much it stings so I am I am conscious of that. So apologies to people who didn't kind of get the context. I didn't mean to upset anybody there. Sometimes I do, and I'm not going to apologize because you know what? Sometimes you gotta you gotta think, and sometimes thinking is painful. Um, but it, in that case, there was no intent to offend anybody there. That was my whole point. That games like The Last of Us are good because the characters are good. And the gameplay is good. Not because of whatever social message it gives. Um, and I I think that, like, that's the thing. People were like, well, we had a bad reaction because we love Joel. I love Joel. Like, I, it's his story. Like, um, it's him reopening after being hurt. But, y- you know, that reality that and I shouldn't say just men do it I do it too I just close off from the world when um I'm hurting uh I don't like people to see weakness um irony of of this week um so I can I can kind of relate to that um and it's it's precisely because I don't like getting stuck with the female weakness stereotypes. And I, I know that that's, you know, five times as hard for guys um, because it's it's gender nonconforming. 
And, um, you know, uh, some people admitted that 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 that, you know, negative, unhealthy masculinity has embedded in them. Um, And it's really hard to. um, uh, Change there. He's he's fighting really hard, but he says, I guess what I'm asking is to explore the concept of those more negative emotions and how they relate to any everything instead of just dismissing them as toxic. And it's like, all right, fine. This is really cool. There's an in there. There's an in point there. Right. Um, Because I'm somebody who, you know, I know what it feels like to get to get I get hurt. So I get angry that I was hurt. And then I want to break shit. Right. Um, and I, I think that maybe because people might be surprised, I am painfully introverted and, you know, through, I think kind of the performative, uh, element to video games that, that helped me. And then, and then getting in the arts and stuff like that, that's helped me craft a persona that I, I can fake extroversion, but I am painfully introverted as a kid. I was painfully shy, um, and uh, so, you know, I, I can kind of relate to the holding everything in. I, I, I do. I do hold shit in. Hello. Hi, Zelda. Um, but uh, so that I guess because I am, you know, gender nonconforming in that way, I, I can relate on that point And we d- we can discuss those emotions. And I mean, I had to learn how to, you know, name my feelings and stuff like that. That did not come naturally to me. So that's something I can offer suggestions with. And I can use examples of, of video games to do that. I mean, I, I, I've i talked at length multiple times about how much I relate to Kratos in the original games. It says a lot about me. So, yeah, this is this is the kind of feedback I wanted. So thank you for that. Um, one guy said that... Um, Men never show emotion to women. They don't let their guard down to women. And I'm like, huh? I'm really sorry you think that, dude, because there are plenty of my male friends who... uh, Now, it's different because barriers come down when you're kind of in the PTSD club. And so I, I know... I have my share of, you know, veterans who happen to be guys, and they'll talk to me because we we have that sort of... PTSD survival in common and so I I guess I I experience male emotions more than other women do um now I think that's in part and I've got a podcast coming up on this an episode of hey ladies coming up on this about supporting men um I work very hard to not do the um enforcement of unhealthy masculinity not being able to handle it when a guy breaks down or is struggling or is frightened or something like that um so listen to that i think i'll be able to address that better in the podcast with with my two uh with my two panelists um and that gives me just enough time to talk about the biden thing um it was interesting because people um i'll 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 do the more serious one that I think is fair and I struggle with this, with this too and that'll um, seg into the more funny criticism. Um, one guy says, I agree with your video but I have a separate but related problem. We just got off, got off a series of news cycles. We were super critical of game executives for crunch time and layoffs and China concerns and etc. Many, many very negative things were said about game executives by normal gamers. And now Biden calls those same folks little creeps and people are outraged. That is a problem. That is his outrage culture and tribalism. If I was to support anyone, it would be Andrew Yang, but that doesn't mean I should jump on the chance to attack Biden. I mean, I get it. He's basically Emperor Palpatine and would probably die before finishing his term. And he's super repugnant, but if we cannot be objective, when even folks we dislike are involved, then we are basically just begging the media to manipulate us. And that was Ralathar, um, 44, and I agree with you, which is why I was very careful to not jump on the bandwagon in terms of he called all game devs little creeps. And, uh, you know, he called the people in that room little creeps um and that's why I, I didn't focus on the little creeps bit 
I focused on the make games that teach you how to murder people bit. And that's why I said, no, this is actually important because at first I'm like, oh, Uncle Joe, you know, I don't I don't OK Boomer uh, when he's not a boomer. The the other is uh, the, <laughs> because he's Palpatine old uh, <laughs> um, when he's not a boomer. Uh, but also I'm not I'm not big on the ageism there. Uh, he's with it enough to know better. Um but also I'm I'm more oh Uncle Joe because again that that performative element of his personality that I talk about on my broken plot broken plot broken clock podcast which is a critical thinking podcast also on the FU network I have two podcasts now um, I should link to these things I will next week um, but the funny complaint let so yes I agree with you Ralathar that we have to be consistent. Even when that other oh, attacking us again comes in, um, which takes me to the other complaint that someone basically was like, um, they claim that I was too easy on Biden uh, uh, comment. I think that you shouldn't be wringing your hands and floundering over a Democratic politician being insulting towards video game developers. I was expecting you to take a stand with the video game developers and say that what Biden said wasn't okay. At best, you said it was bad politics. I doubt you'd be as wishy-washy about it or go into the depths of agreeing that some of the people in that room were probably creeps if a Republican politician said the same thing. Your political bias is showing. No. It's because, first of all, Three of the people in that room were not game devs. Tim Cook of Apple is not a game dev. The CEO of Netflix is not a game dev. There was one other digital thing. And then the head of Zynga. And this is why I hedged. For the reason that Ralathar said, we have to be consistent. The person he probably said it to was John Rich Tiello, a VA at the time. And... As a lot of people pointed out in the comments, and I thought but didn't say, let's face it, most of us have said worse about EA executives at some point. And John Rich Tiello, I've seen clips of him. I, I know more about him than some other game executives. He is he is a part of some very dubious business practices of basically being part of a venture capitalist firm. And um, then basically selling the company to another part of the VC firm and basically selling the company to himself so he could run it. Um, that's a story for another time. It involves Bono from U2. I know it's weird. Um, but um, it's very possible that Little Creep was an appropriate thing to say about him at that time. Um it's not about him being a Democrat. I actually had to check the fact that I expect it from Republicans because their voter base is older. I think a Democrat should bloody well know better. But at the same time, oh, Uncle Joe. And like I said, EA executives are infuriating. And as Ralathar said, we've all said worse, which is why... I was very careful about the little creeps comment and focused on the part that what he said was anti-science and that matters. And sorry, commenter, I disagree with you that I just said it was bad politics. I did say it wasn't OK. I said that if he were up there climate change denying, we'd all see it for the problem it was. If he was denying that vaccines are useful or that there's some horribly negative thing that's worse than like measles or polio, we'd all have an issue with that. I think that's pretty strong criticism. And I stand by that. I don't care what name he called them. I would like the name calling to come out of politics again, but it seems like in America these days, everything has a side of name calling. I'm Canadian. We're kinder, gentler with our politics. Um, but... Um, yeah, the, the science denial the science denial is a problem. It's just a problem. And it would be a problem whatever science he's denying. It's one thing if he doesn't know. And I do think there was a time that a lot of politicians didn't know. And so I'm easier on them. But Joe Biden, of all people, because he was in charge of the task force that did all that research after, um, I think it was Columbine, um, he did all that research he should know better. 
So he's just science denying. He's just science denying and that's not right. All right, everybody. So that's it for the week. I will be back next week with more information on my podcasts for one, um, but also more stuff because it seems like we're finally getting gaming news again. All right. Help support this channel. Become a monthly patron. Patreon.com slash Leanna K. Thanks for watching and thanks for your support in what's been a very, very tough week. R.I.P. Legato. Thanks.